Hey, Carl Schilling again with you. Okay, so today we're going to be, we're in Financial Concierge University. We're on Module 3, and uh, today we are going to talk about the concept. We've been down the line with the message, okay? We understand the message, and then uh, we're, we went into the three golden rules, which is very important to understand the three golden rules of financial independence. And now today we're going to talk about the three stages of you. Now, when I go over this with you, I want you to realize that this is how it all ties together with financial transformation. These are unique concepts, the three golden rules, financial independence, the three stages of you. They're unique concepts. You're not going to hear them out there in the, uh, across the industry. These are not things that uh, are coming down from any home office. These are not things that are coming from any sales system that uh, is in any IMO or any FMO. No, these concepts are fairly unique, and, and I think you'll find them yourself. They're counterintuitive, which is uh, part of rule number one of being financially independent, right? Got to have an open mind, got to be counterintuitive, got to go where the puck is going to be. So these concepts especially, they make sense to people, okay? These are things that I've used over the years myself, and, and, and it's an aha moment a lot of times for people because they don't see these things. No one talks about these things, all right? Now, but you do because you're a financial concierge. And if you tie it back into the financial transformation course of which you're an affiliate, and, and again, you get compensated to do it, that course does the work for you to teach these principles and concepts, and then you can just reinforce them and talk about them as you move on to cross-selling and getting involved in the other circumstances with people, being their guide. But before you can be their guide, there has to be a systematic approach. There has to be an education. This is where the financial literacy education comes in, and that's what financial transformation is all about. It's financial literacy education, okay? So let me go to the uh, screen share, and we can bring up um, – what we want to talk about here in module three and start moving on from there. Okay. So, um, the three stages of you. Okay. Let me get the, there we go. All right. So we've been across, um, you know, module one, the message. We talked about that. We talked about module two, the three golden rules. Okay. And today, we're going to talk about the three stages of you. So I think you'll find that this is a very unique messaging point and something that will separate you. This, you'll be outside the white noise with this, okay? So here's the three stages of you, and everybody goes through this. Everybody has a past, they have a present, and they have a future. Now, that's kind of common sense, but they don't think of that in terms of dollars and money. Okay, they see that in terms of a linear equation where you just simply go from your past to your present to your future. All right, but let's look at how that's impacted in your financial life. Okay, so everyone right now, you, me, everyone that we talk with is experiencing what they've created in the past. Our past has brought us exactly where we are today. So the, the uh, actions we took the things we did in the past are all things that we have manifested that we are now experiencing. Whether those consequences were good or bad, positive or negative, we're experiencing it now because we created it through our past, okay? So the lesson here is that people should consistently make good decisions in their present because it's not just now that that decision is going to impact them. It's going to impact them in their future because their present is soon going to be their past. I hope that makes sense, right? So he, let's look at it in a, in a format of when people borrow or they take on debt. So when you borrow, you are borrowing from future you. You're not borrowing from the bank or the lenders. You're borrowing the unearned income that you have not yet had the opportunity in the future to earn because you're not there at that timeline yet. So that's unearned income that you are pushing from the future, bringing it into the present. Now, the penalty for doing that, because someone else is going to lay out the capital, that's where the bank or whoever comes in, but you've collateralized it. They say it's unsecured, but you've collateralized it yourself with your own future unearned income. 
you have collateralized that loan, whether it's a credit card, whether it's a loan at the bank, whether it's an auto loan, whether it's a mortgage, whatever it is, a business loan, you have collateralized future unearned income. Now, the penalty for that collateralization is interest. So you pay interest. Those are dollars. Those interest payments are dollars that you will never have in the future because those are payments that are going out today. Those are dollars that you won't have available in the future because you're paying interest today. So I want you to think about that. That's a loss of future dollars. It, they cannot be recovered. They're gone. They're spent. They're finished, okay? So there's only two things go on with interest. You gotta remember this and help people understand it. And this is all about becoming financially independent. The only two things that can happen with interest is you either pay it or you earn it. That's it. Those who become financially independent earn more interest than they pay. So let's look at the normal cycle when you help people start to understand this. Here's the normal cycle that everybody has. You know, we work, we earn, we spend, we borrow, and we pay. We work, we earn, we spend, we borrow, and we pay. Now, we don't know what that work means because for everybody it's different. Some people it's the same as a J-O-B. They have a job, okay? They exchange hours and time for money. So that's what they do. And again, this is not a judgment issue. We know you got to have three types of income, but most people are working on direct income. And even if they have two jobs, it's, it's two forms of direct income. It's still not residual. So we work, we earn, we spend, we borrow, and we pay, Okay. Now that's the normal cycle for almost every American. Remember now, we're dealing predominantly probably with the middle class America, which is going to be somewhere between earning 50,000 and 150,000 dollars a year. However, we can still deal with very, very uh, uh, above average wealthy people as well. It's not a problem, okay? So but the cycle for us uh, ideally would be to help these underserved, unserved middle class people. Okay, but they all, they work, they earn, they spend, they borrow, they pay. Okay, that's what they do. So again, with interest, there's only two opportunities, two options for them, okay, with interest. They're either paying interest, you notice it's in red, because it's a loss, or they're earning interest, and it's in green, because it's a gain. Now, remember this, the law of compound interest, it works regardless of which direction of interest you're going in. All right, so when you are... Um, uh, paying interest, you're compounding it. That's a negative compounding interest effect. So that interest is compounding. So those losses are being compounded. Not only are you losing, but you're exponentially losing because the losses are being compounded. It's the same thing with the power of compound interest when you're earning interest. Okay, compound interest is a marvelous thing when it's working in your direction. Not so great when it's working against you. And it's only two ways it can work. And this is something people don't understand. Trust me, most people you speak to will not be aware of this at all. And in financial transformation, we go over a good portion of this, okay? So let's look at that money. To today, predominantly, money is in two dimensions for people. We're talking about money in three dimensions. So it's three-dimensional. We're talking about the uh, past, your present, and your future. And we're talking about how the, uh, the activities you take here in the present, we know what happens from the past. It's going to become your present. But the actions you take right now in your present are going to dramatically affect that future. And most people, because of debt and because of credit, most people tap deeply into their future. They tap almost all of their future to bring it to the present. This is why 95% of our nation ends up financially dependent. They have tapped their entire future into the present and they continually are on a cycle of paying interest all the way until their deathbed. This is what happens. This is the hole in the boat. Okay? So if you look, we mentioned a compounding. So, you know, how deep a hole do people want to climb out of? Now, the compounding always affects the pay cycle, okay, with most people. Now, it should affect, you know, the earn cycle as well, but it doesn't because most people know nothing about that. 
So uh, we know everybody in America has a spending problem. We all do. The government, for God's sake, has a spending problem. We know this. They, they spend every dollar they can find, and they spend the future of America. They've already done that, tapped into $22 trillion. Those are all future future use of, of the entire country. So the government has put the future of everybody in the nation in jeopardy by borrowing and, and moving forward all of that unearned income or so-called taxes. Anyway, so you get to the spend, borrow, but in the pay cycle, okay, this is where it all happens. This is where the negativity, this is where the driving force that makes people be so uh, uh, have the inability to become financially independent, okay? Because they're compounding their interest, okay? That interest they are paying, they're paying interest from the, from the past, okay? Because once you take that loan and that interest payment c- continues on this month, next month, the month after, the month after, the month after, and your mortgage, you're, in the beginning, did you know in your mortgage in the beginning, you're prepaying almost all the interest up front? In the first, uh, I think it's close to, in a 30-year mortgage, it's probably 17 and a half years where you have paid predominantly almost all the interest. So it's all prepaid. So the last 12 to 13 years of mortgage is basically you paying down the principal. So you've already paid the bank right up front all the prepaid interest. And when it's all over, you've paid three times more than the value of the home and try getting that back when you sell it, okay? So, not such a great deal, is it? So you're paying interest from the past, right now in the present, and you're paying interest into the future. And every one of those dollars that you pay interest with is a future dollar that you do not have to earn interest on. So this is the kind of thing we're talking to people and helping them do, okay? Right, so you gotta ask people, you're compounding Negatively, you're compounding your future in a negative hole. You're digging a hole. How deep a hole do you want to climb out of is the question. And if you don't start climbing now, you're not getting out of that hole. That's why 95% of society never reaches financial independence. Okay, so um, that is what our lesson's about for the – that's the – That's the three stages of you, okay? That's the past, the present, and the future you uh, that is all basically built in that most people have no idea about. This is where financial literacy comes in. People don't think about it. They don't understand. uh, They hear it, and and people talk to them about it on television and the media, like behind me. You know, it's Bloomberg channel behind me. You know, these people give uh, what I would constitute as bad advice every single day. So people are hearing tremendously poor advice on a regular basis because everyone has a bias, okay? The stockbroker, commonly now referred to as a registered investment advisor or a uh, so-called financial planner, okay? It's still a stockbroker for the most part. They, they can do whatever they want. They can put lipstick on it, shine it up, but trust me, it's the same thing. It's the same game, except now – They've learned that a fee-based model may work out because this way commissions are a bad thing and they want to tell everybody, oh, commissions are evil, you know, somehow that I'm a fiduciary and I work at a fiduciary level, I'm better than the next guy. Listen, of the last, uh, of the, about 70% of the last uh, Ponzi schemes that I've seen in the last two years have come from people who were not wirehouse uh, brokers, you know, not Merrill Lynch, not mainline banks, okay? Most of those Ponzi scams have come from people who are either running their own IRA, registered investment advisor, or they're running um, a, a firm uh, a firm that supposedly is based on a fiduciary concept. And because they're a fiduciary, they would never, ever cheat their people. But people who sell on commissions, those are evil, bad people, all right? Believe me. Uh, both sides have enough of wrong in this, you know, to, to, to carry uh, a rock up a hill. But in between, there's nothing wrong with commissions, okay? And the advice that we give 
you know, in our message, we tell people your best interest is our only concern. And I mean that we stop scams and frauds every single day. I wish I could have had clients that wasted and lost incredible amounts of money in Ponzi schemes. I wish I could have got to them and spoke to them before they got into that Ponzi scheme because they could have been a very, very valuable client who we would have helped do tremendously well. But listen, you're going to deal with people every single day who get bad information. We live in the highest rate of financial illiteracy in the world. Don't, don't underestimate that. Believe me, and you're going to deal with people. So these concepts, the reason financial transformation, I think personally, and I'm biased because I'm the one that produced it, created and put it out. Yeah, it's not about me. It's the deal that I think the message is different. I think the message is something that needs to be heard. I know it needs to be heard. I don't know that it'll be received. I can't control that, but I know it'll be heard. And the reason I'm trying to uh, develop a team of financial concierges like yourself is because I want that message to be out there. I want us to all be out messaging how financial uh, independence can be achieved, but there are certain pathways to financial independence. People have to understand the world they live in, the environment they're in. We are in the greatest nation in the world for total independence, free markets, you know, entrepreneurialism, okay? We have the, we have the ability to go out and do whatever we want to do in life. As long as we stay within the laws and the regulations, we can do whatever we want. And that means we can help a huge amount of people once they grasp it and understand they too can go out and create all of this. So the three rules are pretty simple. Open-minded, go where the puck is going to be. You got to be counterintuitive. Okay. Law of multiplicity. Second rule, law of multiplicity. You've got to have three forms of income. They, the, those three forms are direct, residual, and passive. Everything that we do in our, in our entire network is built that way. Direct, residual, and passive. That's all we deal in. Okay, so we put our money where our mouth is. As a financial concierge, you're sharing with people, you're doing the things you're telling them to do. You're not telling them to do something they're not doing. This guy up here on the television right now is telling people to do something I promise you he's not doing. Okay, because it sounds good. He gets paid. The advertising dollars, the 12B1 fees and everything are paying him. The network pays him. The mutual funds pay the network. So that advice goes out, and what are they going to talk about, okay? They're going to talk about the thing that they get paid to talk about. Now, that's the beauty in our system. We're not getting paid directly to talk about something. We're going out with a mission, and we're solving the problems with the solutions, and we get compensated and paid from those solutions. We're not getting paid to advertise those solutions, okay? So... Third rule, got to have an impenetrable value proposition. That's what we train, coach, and develop for. This is your value proposition. The value you're offering are the three golden rules to financial independence, the three stages of you, so people can understand. What does it mean? Why do 95% of our society get to 65 and older and either end up dead, dead broke, or at best, financially dependent? This is why they do. They have spent their future. They have borrowed and brought it forward. They're still paying interest on their future, but their future is thinning out. I'll be 65 in June. Now, I personally, very happy. The Lord has blessed me with good health, and I'm very active, and I want to stay that way, and I feel very young. And I don't plan on ever retiring. Retirement is a just, it's not even a concept in my mind. It's just ridiculous, I think. And I think people like you, you become successful enough, you don't want to retire. Why do you want to retire in the midst of success? Yeah, you want to go do things, but you can always do things if you're financially independent. You can take time anytime you want. Do whatever you want. Go wherever you want. Be whoever you want. Okay, see whoever you want. Spend money any way you feel like spending it. That's the point of being financially independent. It's not being wealthy. It's not being rich. It's not having a, a lifestyle. It's having a life experience that you want to have. And the way to do it is to help other people 
become financially independent. So this is the things we're doing. That's your value proposition. And lastly, into this module here with the three stages of you, it's just a matter of helping people identify that money is truly a 3D object. Money is in three dimensions. Money's in the past, it's in the present, and it's in the future. The present you're now experiencing is coming directly from decisions you made in the past. And by bringing your future into the present, you are creating the same circumstance and the same limitation into your future because you are bringing that forward. Don't let anybody tell you different. The bankers who want to lend you money, the uh, credit card companies that want you to buy things you have to have now, I'm not telling you you, you can't uh, use credit. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not, we're not teaching that. We're not telling people you ought to rip up your credit cards, or pay off all your debt. We're not saying that. We're saying you ought to get a handle on the debt, but that's in financial transformation. We're also saying that you ought to find a way to create more income so that you can put that income into a bank today. That bank will be growing for you, and you will have that bank across your future and across every stage of your life on the way to your fourth quarter. That's the point we're telling people. But most people don't have enough money to do that because they're indebted from the future coming forward and now they're paying interest and they have no other money. So what can we help them do? We can help them earn income and create more income. If they create more income, they create more capital today. Plus they're creating future earned income future earned, a future unearned income, future earned with the residual and passive. That's not future unearned. Direct income is unearned in the future. Residual and passive income is being earned every single day. It's earned into the future. It's burned into the future. Okay, so hopefully that lesson is good for everybody. Hopefully you understand Again, as with anything, it's a virtual, uh, it's a, not virtual, it's an integrated uh, video. You'll have the uh, PowerPoint in here like you usually do. Inside the video itself, we'll put a document. Got the email, you can email, you can directly call me, all right, uh, you know, direct a live connect on the telephone. Whatever you need, please, I'm here. I'm open. You know, literally, you know, we've got hundreds of people in the system. I'm always here. I'm always here. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to be here for everybody. The reason we're trying to do it this way is I think it's easier to get the message out concisely, have it on video so you can see it again and again and again, replay it, go over it, start to become these, these things in your mind, have these concepts in your mind, be able to talk about them like that. This will lead to a lot of sales, more sales than you've ever had before. And it not only will be more sales, it'll be larger sales, better sales, okay? Not single need sales. We're not solving a single need. We're solving the entire universe of the financial need that someone has to become financially independent. That's what we're solving. That's what you need to be on base for, okay? All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. I look forward to speaking to you real soon. And uh, module four, uh, we will get, uh, we'll get out there and, and we'll be talking about the, um, the different professional levels for us, okay? Have a great day.